and a pleasant good evening to everybody. Welcome to Glendale, Arizona and our season premiere of National Junior College Football, where tonight two nationally ranked teams, the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, will be taking on the Glendale Gauchos. And alongside the Hall of Famer Joe Kirsting, I'm Jeff Lowry. Welcome to MCTV Sports. Tonight, as I said, two nationally ranked teams. What a season last year for Doug Madoski's Fighting Artichokes. They win their last 10 games, including the Western States Football League. And what a, what a job that they did. Uh, they ended up fourth in the national rankings at the end of the season. And here tonight, they're coming off a loss last week to Western, and they're led by one of the top running backs in the conference in Zaquan Summers. Yeah, Zaquan Summers was the uh, player of the game in the Valley Sun Bowl last year. Rushed for over 1,100 yards, and to start the 2013 season, he was actually fourth team on the depth chart. So that's how junior college football is. You give him an opportunity, and these guys can come out of nowhere and be great ones. Well, and you talk about last week's game, you know, Scottsdale losing big to uh, nationally ranked Western Arizona, 49 to 20. The defense has to play a lot better. They're led by Trey Campbell, who had four interceptions a season ago. Yeah, Campbell leads them in the secondary, but they've got to get a lot better in their entire defensive structure. Um, they've been playing great defense historically. Doug is a defensive-oriented coach, uh, but uh, Glendale's got a very stout offense better than they've had in a few years. Yeah. And so Scottsdale's really got to turn it up on defense tonight. And you talk about Glendale and their head coach, Mickey Bell. He's in his seventh season. They've been to four Valley of the Sun Bowls from 2009 to 2012. Led by a, a young man out of Weber State. He was a red shirt player there and Jeff Kidd, very talented. Mickey Bell thanks the world of this young man. I uh, got a chance to watch Glendale play Mesa last week. Extremely impressed with their quarterback, Jeff Kidd. He is tall, he's athletic, he's very accurate, but more than anything, very poised guy, yes. very poised. Doesn't let the rush affect him, knows when to take the ball down, does a great job keeping his eyes focused down the field, on his receivers and feels the rush, which is kind of an innate trait for many quarterbacks of that caliber. And they come in with a record of 2-0. and They look very strong with victories over Eastern and Mesa. One reason this team has done so well, the depth that they have on defense, especially on the front wall on that defensive line, and two players that really came out of nowhere, Chris Hill, who had three sacks last week against Mesa. This is a young man who came into camp at the end of July, is still probably learning the defense, and Ebe Kinsley, the young man, Kingsley out of Nigeria. These are two players that did not take a snap during uh, their high school days. Well, these are two guys that have something a lot of people don't have, and that's called athleticism mm -hmm. with size. And you put that combination together, it creates two guys that can get after the quarterback and make big plays. The Gauchos had eight sacks last week against Mesa and did not rush more than four guys on one down of the game. So if you can do that with your down four, and sometimes you're only bringing three, you're doing a heck of a job in the defensive front. Well, so the Sage is set here. We've got Scottsdale. They come in with a record of 0-1. Glendale is 2-0, both teams nationally ranked. And when we come back, all the exciting play-by-play -play action. It's National Junior College Football on MCTV Sports. Okay, well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. Of course not. Well, it was too graphic for the kids, <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. You know, i got to make this That's up. Really not this is Vinny's watch. And welcome back to Hanhila Stadium. We're getting set for MCTV's coverage of junior college football, National Junior College football. Scottsdale coming out in the all-white uniforms, 0-1, fresh off a big loss at the hands of Western Arizona, 49-20 last week. The Gauchos off to a great start, 2-0. They are the 19th-ranked team currently in the nation. And at this time, let's send it down to our the third member of our uh, broadcast team, Mike Caratanuto. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, you and Coach talked in the pregame, obviously, about Glendale's offense. And their two running backs, Brandon Jenkins and Roland Genesee, absolutely a phenomenal tandem. And the Scottsdale defense is going to have a lot to worry about because the receivers from Glendale 
are gelling very early in the season. Talking to Coach Bell last week, saw him here play Mesa, and he was happy with the progress of his offense, like you guys talked about, led by Jeff Kidd. But for Scottsdale, I talked to offensive coordinator Tommy Ziegler during the week, and he was saying that quarterback Michael Sanders, who took over for Blake Deckers, you guys know, went to UNLV, had a phenomenal season last year for the Artichokes. Michael Sanders might not be as much of a scramble quarterback as Decker, but is the most cerebral quarterback he has ever had. He was in the system last year, and he knows the offense, and he says he doesn't overthink it. They run the offense. The tempo gets it going gets it going very well for the Artichokes, so Michael Sanders running the offense very effectively for the Artichokes, and his center, Will Kreider. Coach Ziegler went out to say they've had some great centers here at Scottsdale while he's been the offensive coordinator, but Will Kreider, probably the best center as well. Very, very cerebral just like Sanders, and it is going to be a very phenomenal chess match. We'll have more throughout the game, and like you guys said last week, Glendale defense with eight sacks, so just something to look at early on as Scottsdale's going to start this game on offense. Back to you guys. Team for Scottsdale, one of the fastest players on their team is Kalen Hightower. He is a native of Georgia, doing the kicking honors for Glendale, who comes out in the all-black uniforms with the red helmet is number 46, Patrick Murray, who attended Shadow Mountain High School here in the Valley of the Sun and has converted 10 of his 11 attempts on extra points, has yet to make a field goal. So we're getting set to go. It's week two for Scottsdale, and it's week three for the undefeated Gauchos, and this game is underway. High end over end kick taken by Hightower back near the three yard line. He'll race up to the 20, spins out of a tackle near the 21, up across the 30 and out of bounds near the 37 yard line. A 33 yard return. He's gonna be pushed out of bounds eventually by the Glendale Gauchos and Walter Nunley. Well, the Gauchos had great coverage on that, but their right contained man, Darren Dorsey, lost his positioning and Hightower was able to get outside of him and uh, pick up pretty good extra about 15 yards out to the 39 yard line. Now they're gonna mark him out of bounds at the 38 yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 and our first look at Pinnacle Pioneer alumni, a local high school at quarterback Michael Sanders. He's tall, 6'5", 210, 215 pounds, pocket style quarterback here's a throw over the middle and it was nearly caught by the receiver behind the intended target and that was Thaddeus Thompson incomplete brings up second down and 10. Well Glendale was able to get a little bit of pressure there force a, a bit of an early throw there was a D lineman around his legs as he's trying to deliver that ball and it brings up second and 10. Michael Sanders a young man who had a fine senior season, 1,800 yards, 20 touchdowns, did, had only 12 throws last year. Working behind Blake Decker, who threw for over 4,000 yards. Here's Glendale coming up big time on the run to Zaquan Summers, and he is upended in the backfield, and you can't get much better than that, Jared Tuliagi. Yeah, Tuliagi got off the block very quickly there and was able to hit Summers for a two-yard loss. That's going to be the key for Glendale, if they can slow down or stop Summers and force this to be a one-dimensional Scottsdale offense. Will Kreider, the sophomore center, doing the snapping honors here for Michael Sanders on a third and long here, third and 12, a minute into the contest, and the pass is complete to the near side. Hightower, probably their top receiver this year. He'll be pushed out of bounds at the 49-yard line. 15 yards later, it's a first down for Scottsdale. And a great pocket that time uh, by the offensive line for the Artichokes, and you give Sanders time, he will pick you apart. 14 minutes on the clock. We're in the first quarter, no score. First possession of the game, Scottsdale in the all-white. Michael Sanders under the tutelage of former NFL quarterback Randy Wright in there at quarterback for Scottsdale and on the fly sweep to the far side. Looks like Scottsdale will employ Hightower and he'll get close to three, maybe four on the play. Well, Scottsdale changed personnel that time. They went to 20 personnel with two running backs in the game and uh, there's remaining in that 20 personnel again. 20 personnel means two backs, no tight ends and three wide receivers. Right side of that offensive front line leading the charge on that last one, Sal Montione. 
13-20 on the clock. No score, first quarter action out of shotgun. Here's a sweep, run it to the near side, and Summers is going to be hit. He's going to be brought down for a loss. That's a second tackle for loss on the opening series of this game, and Deshaun Mays, the uh, young man who got a lot of playing time last year, the sophomore out of Colorado. Yeah, Mays did a great job keeping leverage on the slot receiver's block, and uh, the back tried to cut it up inside between the block and, and Mays, and Mays made a great hit for a yard loss. Well, we'd like to inform you right now that we are in the middle of a dust storm, the beginning parts of a dust storm. So you'll probably see that on your screen as Summers breaks a couple of tackles inside the 40, inside the 30, finally wrapped up right around the 26 yard line. A very impressive 20 yard run for a young man who rushed for over 1,100 yards for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes a year ago. Uh, great execution by the Scottsdale offensive line. Summers, you just need to give him a little crack. He's a small in stature guy, but he is explosive and he found the seam and broke off that nice run. Outstanding blocking led by Jack Nazinski. Nazinski, bad snap goes over the head of everybody and this one is gonna be corralled back at the, looks like the Glendale 45. Glendale says they have it, so does the officials. And there's your first turnover of the ball game at the 12-17 mark first quarter. Yeah, it was just a poor snap from center. It was, it was way too high. The, the quarterback was ready for the snap, but it was just a very poor snap, and there's nothing else he could do. Uh, Summers, it looked like, was going to recover the ball, the running back, but the, the Gundale defenders knocked him off the ball, which is what you teach him to do, and uh, was able to make that big recovery. So with 12 minutes and 17 seconds left to play here, we are in the early stages of what we call out here a haboob. A giant dust storm has hit Panhela Stadium at the start of this game. Glendale comes out running featuring quarterback Jeff Kidd, a sophomore out of Sprague, Oregon. He was a red shirt and a transfer from Weber State. And of course, there's a Weber State connection with Glendale and J.D. Sollers, their offensive coordinator. Just under 12 minutes left to play. No gain on that first run of the game. And now they come out screen pass. That one is a live ball. And fortunately for Glendale, they were able to jump on it. And that's going to go for a, a big time loss and a heads up play by Genesee in the backfield of Glendale. Well, you're exactly right. That was a backwards pass to Genesee. And uh, great job by him of getting on that ball. But that's one of the poorer throws I've seen by Jeff Kidd. Got a chance to see him play last week. And he had very few of those kind of throws. Usually he's right on target when open receivers. And some of that may be a result of the wind that has really picked up. If, if you could see the flag right now, probably about 20 miles per hour. Kid in trouble on third and long, still in trouble, and he's finally going to go down. And it was Kissimmee Jagney, a star over at Chandler High School where he played for Sean Iguano. He was a red shirt at ASU, and he got in there all 6'5", 240 pounds of him. Well, the Scottsdale defense already in the first series was able to do something that Mesa couldn't do all last week, and that's put pressure on the quarterback and sack Mr. Kidd. Well, I'll tell you that you got one of the top punters right now in there in Colby Gregory, who averaged over 42 yards a kick last year. He's down a little bit this year, but they've only played two games. Here comes the pressure, and he is able to get it off. And there is a penalty marker down. The ball is dropped by Hightower. That ball's loose, and Glendale trying to pick it up. They kick it towards the end zone. It's still a live ball, and who's got it? Well, it's a mad scrum for the ball just inside the Scottsdale end zone. Their defending end zone, I should say. It's going to be interesting to see how these officials sort this out. They're going to stop the clock at 10 minutes and 20 seconds, and they're going to confer on this call whether or not we have no indication yet, Joe, who recovered the fumble. There is a penalty marker back, so it's most likely coming back unless it was Glendale who recovered it. Well, you never know. They could, if, if, if they say the recovery is at the one-yard line and Scott still has the ball, they may decline that penalty, but this is definitely going to be a uh, personal foul roughing the kicker on Scottsdale. And so no, never an indication. We're still looking for an indication who recovered the ball. 
I think our officials kind of are blowing this one a little bit in terms of informing the crowd of what has happened here. I think we maybe we'll get some verbal communication here from the referee. assume they're going to re-kick this one. I'm a little confused, I'm Coach. still confused myself. <laughs> I, I, I have, that I've was a poor left. job of officiating. Let us know what was going on back there. They so never signaled touchback. They never signaled anything. Now the line of scrimmage is the 39-yard line. Again, Gregory to kick. And this one's going to be blocked, and Scottsdale got in it. Gregory recovers it, but the blocking broke down, and Stephen Hubick, a sophomore linebacker out of Fountain Hills, Arizona, got in there and got both balls on the ball. Yeah, Hubick was totally unblocked. He came right through the middle in what we call the A-gap between the center and guard, and he did a great job getting both hands over the ball, and a big, big play to change the momentum for uh, Scottsdale. And Scottsdale's going to start with outstanding scoring position. Field position, I should say. Still baseball season. So Sanders brings his team to the line of scrimmage. So even though I don't know you'd consider that a turnover, but both teams have made mistakes in coughing it up. And now Sanders will give to Summers, and he's caught in the backfield, and down he goes. Outstanding job. Well, Glendale at this point has done a great job on the outside zone play or the stretch play that Scottsdale likes to run. The main play that they've been able to get yardage on has been that, that draw play on that third and six. So we'll see and keep our eye on the, on the running game here because that's going to be a big factor on how this game goes. That was Tohe on the first in on the tackle on that last play. A loss of five, second and 15, 940 on the clock, first quarter action. No score, but Scottsdale's threatening. Here's Jaqua, and he is going to be hit and dropped at the 26-yard line. So I'll tell you what, between the tackles so far, Coach, Glendale's looking pretty solid. Yeah, well, that, that's been their point of emphasis uh, all this week is the stop number 36. They've been able to do it so far. But again, uh, the key now is this third and long situation. Against this very, very strong wind, I don't know if you can tell, at, at home, but the wind is really blowing against Scottsdale right now, so it's going to be difficult to get the ball thrown very far downfield. It's third and 15. To the near side, not much there. DeAndre Saunders, their third leading tackler for Glendale, was in on that last play. And now you're looking at fourth and long, and I can't imagine you're going to send a field goal unit out going up against what could very well be a 25-mile-an-hour win, maybe more. Yeah, they're, they're keeping their offense on the field. I think this is a smart move here. Uh, you might see a quick kick, possibly, from the quarterback. But uh, right now, they're in a traditional strong back formation with two tight ends. Michael Sanders at quarterback, and they're going to hand off. They're going to go to one of their secondary backs, and that is Weiwei, Armand Weiwei, and he's going to be way shy of the first down after a six-yard pickup. So a turnover turnover on downs, 8-12, I believe, is the time on the clock. We've got a couple of light bulbs out here at the stadium, and we are scoreless, and you're watching National Junior College Football here on MCTV Sports alongside Joe Kirsting and our sideline reporter, Mike Caratanuto. I'm Jeff Lowry. We got in the, we are in the midst of a dust storm, or as the locals call it, a haboob. We've got wind conditions, about 20, 25 miles per hour as Glendale keeps it on the ground, and both teams being very conservative on the offensive side. A pickup of maybe a yard on the play. He'll bring up a second and a long nine. The wind, by the way, coach, moving from 
the south end zone, which is the end zone right currently behind Glendale, and it's blowing directly north, so directly straight up the field. And, and you're right, Jeff, it's got to be blowing at least 20 plus miles per hour, 20, 25 miles per hour. Glendale comes out and trying to throw the ball, and it looked like it might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage, and it falls incomplete. Tough to throw over Stephen Bundy, the 6'2", 270 pounder out of Gilbert. Well, weather's definitely gonna impact this game unless this uh, storm passes through. And uh, But for right now, that wind is really wailing. Third and nine with seven and a half left to go. Jeff Kidd back to pass. He's gonna go for a home run ball with the wind behind him. And it's just incomplete. Tried to hook up with Rod Taylor, the 6'5 sophomore receiver out of Montebello, Colorado. And he hit Taylor twice for long touchdown passes last week against Mesa, and you see why he likes that target. He's 6'5, he's got great speed, and he had two strides on that corner, but again, the win obviously affected the trajectory of that throw. So it's three and out for the Glendale Gauchos here in the first quarter. Seven and a half left to play here in the opening quarter. That probably would have been six for Glendale had they hooked up. Gregory's second punt. And this time he booms this one deep. 47 yards on that punt and about a seven yard return. Outstanding coverage by the Glendale Gauchos and that'll turn it back over to the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes but a tremendous play on special teams by Savion Morris. Savion Morris made a great open field tackle on uh, Hightower, which is a very difficult thing to do. But uh, uh, special teams coordinator for the Gauchos, Kelly Epley, did a great job cinching up the protection that time because uh, they had, had no penetration on that block on the last play. Mitch Strews is in there at one tight end, double tight end formation, 7-18 on the clock. Scoreless tie, Sanders out of the pistol. He will hand off and it goes straight up the gut and a gain of maybe two on the play. Good strong play up front by Glendale. 63 was in there, Clay low. He'll have to sit out a play. He lost his helmet out of Baghdad, Arizona. 63, 270 pounder. Well, this is not the true personality of the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes. To be in 22 personnel, which means two backs, two tight ends, they do that on the goal line <laughs> a couple times a game, maybe. Uh, but because of the win, this is what they are forced to do. Scottsdale comes out, back to the ground attack. Oh, what a menacing hit at the line of scrimmage by Joey Siza. Skelsa read that very, very well, the got the off. through the gap and was able to meet the back in the hole and limited it to about a one yard gain. So it brings up third and seven for the Artichokes. Well, we're seeing outstanding play by this Glendale team between the tackles early in the game. And of course that goes to, without saying because primarily Scottsdale has been running the ball. And Skelza made a tremendous play out of nearby Cactus High School. Third and six with 6.30 on the clock. Saunders, play action, the rollout. He's being pursued. He throws, it's complete. And the catch is made by Thayer Blakes, the freshman tight end who played at Mountain Point High School, brought down by Ryan Wood, just shy of the first down. That was a heck of a catch by Blakes. My goodness, high ball like that and the tackler hitting him right as the ball got, oh, actually they called it incomplete, Oh, Jeff. they did, how about that? Yeah, I, th I thought he had it as well. So it will bring up fourth down and seven. Six minutes, 20 seconds left to play here. First quarter action. Back deep is Terry Juneal, and a 5'9", 175-pounder. And Jeff, he is special, number 83. If he gets a chance to get his hands on the ball, Watch out. Matt Room back to punt, averaging 37 and a half a game. This is a 40, 39 yard punt and about a five yard return. Takes us to the 6-12 mark here in the first quarter. It'll be Glendale's football. We are in a scoreless tie. We're also in a dust storm here at <laughs> Hanhela Stadium. But all the fans are still here. Yep. 
This is a big game. This is a huge game in the Western States Football League for this early in the season. And uh, it's too bad this weather has come through because it's sure impacting the play calling at this point in the game. First down and 10. Galchos with Jeff Kidd at quarterback and he will throw underneath, caught at the 36, up across the 40 and wrapped up near the 43 yard line. That's good enough for 12 yards and a first down as Kidd hooks up with one of his tight ends. That's Evan Fonts. He's a transfer in uh, this summer and he has been a difference maker for this offense. Very reliable guy playing that tight end position. 6'4 and 245. I'll bring him up to the 43. Glendale, they have not had a successful drive so far. And on the end around run, they're going to gain nine more on that play. So a nice run there. Good blocking and containment on the left side. And that's Cody Zimmerman who got the call that time, the sophomore. Well, that's going to bring up third and, or second and short. So this is where you normally get that play action pass situation or just trying to punch out the first down. We'll see what Glendale does with the wind behind them. Second and one, 520 on the clock. First quarter action, flags all over the place and most likely some movement on that offensive line. And that's the coach's nightmare right there, Jeff. On the offense, number 72. Second and one, the whole playbook's open to you. You can go for whatever you want and we get a false start causes coaches to lose their hair or make it go gray. Clock remains at 5-12. Inside handoff it goes. Big hole left side. So the penalty does not hurt. And a gain of 11 yards. I think that was Genesee on the call. And move the chains for Glendale to first. Really nice misdirection play. They, they fake the fly motion sweep to the wide receiver coming in motion and give it to Genesee going back the other way. And Genesee broke that one big, very nice blocking on the left side by the Gaucho offensive line. Jalen Daly was one of the players on the tackle, the freshman down lineman. So first and 10 working from the 43 of Scottsdale and they'll screen it out underneath. And that's gonna net them another seven or eight yards. Brought down defensively on the play by Olmstead, and Glendale starting to move the ball with the, the short game. Yeah, that's Brandon, Brandon Jenkins on the little slip screen out to the right flat. Uh, if his wide receiver on that play, Dean, 85, would have made a better block, he might have had better yardage. But uh, the corner was able to get off Dean's block and keep it to an eight-yard gain. So a successful play nonetheless, second down and two as we approach the four minute mark. Inside handoff goes to Jenkins and Jenkins stopped. Once again, 52 on the play daily after, well, no gain on the play. So under four minutes left to play, scoreless tie. First quarter action, coach. Glendale marching, but they need a third down conversion. Well, this is really a key drive for Glendale because it may be the last time this half that they have the wind at their back. So they really need to convert and keep this drive alive. Get a quarterback, transfer out of Weber State. Inside handoff it goes at seven, call it six yards later, rolling Genesee and the Gauchos have a first down. Well, Scott's a great penetration on the play, but Genesee was able to avoid the first tackler and pick up that first down. That's great individual effort by number 24. Officials timeout now. As they get the chain gang all set up on the far side and now the clock winding down inside at 320 left to go here in the first quarter. Working out a shotgun and they fake that slant run and the quarterback calls his own number. He's down to the 25, brought down defensively by Tim Clayton, one of the, the leaders on that defense out of Detroit, Michigan. Well, kid lost the ball at the end of that play and the Scottsdale defender picked it up. But uh, I think Glendale got a break there and they called him down by contact. Uh, but I, I don't know if we had replay here, they may not have gotten that ball back. Eighth play of the drive, 240 on the clock, running right side. And again, Genesee with the carry, 
And again, he is going to be brought down, well, this time by Brent Davidson, but move the chains again. And this is the approach that Glendale would like to take tonight, to be able to hammer the ball with the run, mix in some play action passes, mix in some quarterback runs. But if they can continue to run the ball effectively with the tailback, uh, it's going to be in their advantage. Four first downs on this drive, and now Kidd calls his own number. He's going to be wrapped up near the 19. So good penetration that time and stopped by Jamar Pennick, the sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, Kidd is not what you would call a great running quarterback, but I would call him an effective and efficient running quarterback. And he got some nice runs last week against Mesa, and, and they'll bring it down a few more times tonight for key yardage for this Glendale offense. With a strong wind to their back, facing second and nine, Kidd stays in the pocket, has plenty of time. Now flushed out of it, he will throw off balance towards the back corner of the end zone, and Glendale has scored. Touchdown, Gauchos. What a sensational job hooking up with Rod Taylor in his third touchdown of the year. And that was all because of the legs of quarterback Jeff Kidd. Well, I would call it the poise of quarterback Jeff Kidd. My goodness. This is, this is what I saw last week when I saw him play for the first time. He doesn't get rattled under pressure. He keeps his eyes down the field. And the awareness to know that his 6'5 receiver is against a shorter corner in the back of the end zone. And he just put the ball up for grabs. And Taylor did the rest with that great vertical jump and height disadvantage. 19 yard pass play. So Jeff Kidd hooks up with Rod Taylor. And here with one minute and 46 seconds left to play, after a 10 play 70 yard drive, Glendale leads seven to nothing. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen, and I am your dividend. Shadow Mountain High School star Patrick Murray getting set to kick <laughs> off after Glendale March 70 yards down the field. Rod Taylor's outstanding catch in the corner of the end zone, and it's seven to nothing, Glendale. Davis and Hightower back to receive, but with a 25 mile per hour win, that one is kicked out of the back of the end zone with ease. So now let's see if Scottsdale can get it going. They've had, at times, outstanding field position. This is their fourth possession of the contest. 146 left to go here in the opening quarter. Well, I assume that their approach is gonna to be to try to knock out a first down and keep the ball on the ground so they can get that quarter to change and have that wind advantage. The wind is gonna make a huge difference in how this game is played tonight. So with the touchback, the rule in college, the ball will be placed at the 25 yard line. For some of you who are saying, why is the ball at the 25? That is the new rule a couple of years ago. Summers found a seam, a gap right, and exploits it for 10 yards and a first down for Scottsdale. And that's what the doctor ordered. Well, that's the play that they got to make go. When we watched Scottsdale last year, that's the play that Summers was special at, to zone play and be able to find the seam and cut it, and there he goes again. Well, Summers with that good vision that time that in between the tackle defense really rising to the occasion. And it looked like 42 may have been at the bottom of the heat, Jared Tuialagi. Second down, we'll call it eight. Inside of 120, 115 now on the clock. Spread offense for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes, Western States football champs a year ago. And the run this time belongs to Weiwei, and he is pounding his way inside Glendale territory all the way down to the 39-yard line, first down. That's the biggest hole that Glendale has had open against them in three games, and a tremendous uh, touchdown-saving tackle by Streeter Turner on that play, number 33 for Glendale. 23 yards on the run and a first down, so Scottsdale getting their ground attack going. Now they screen it out to the near side, and they hit one of those big tight ends, and that's Blake's. 
The interesting thing about Blake's coach, this is a young man, two seasons at Mountain Point, one of the premier high school programs, especially at the Division I level, only had 12 catches in two seasons, but they say that they feel that he might be in line to be one of the next great tight ends at Scottsdale as Armand Weiwei gets the carry here, and he's brought down on the tackle by Dallas Tuafiti. And if you know the history of Scottsdale's offense, it's yep. Tommy Ziegler's been here. Uh, tight ends have been huge playmakers every year. Yep. So if he's the next in line, boy, he's got some big numbers coming up in the next year or two. So Glendale will take a 7 to nothing lead going into quarter number two. We'll be back on MCTV Sports in just a moment. If you want to see the other side of the earth, then travel with 180 View here on MCTV. Tune in and take a journey from Arizona to the Ukraine. Compare lifestyles, architecture, the land, and traditions when we look at each culture and learn about our differences. 180 View is seen on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For airtimes, go to maricopa.edu slash MCTV. Welcome back to Hanhila Stadium. The Glendale Gauchos, the home team, they lead it 7 to nothing, and we're getting set for play number six of what has been a 40-yard drive for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes as they try to equalize here early stages second quarter. Sanders, the quarterback, and handing off, and he's going back to Armand Weiwei, who has been the leading rusher on this drive for Scottsdale, and move the chains, it's another first. Well, Weiwei is a much bigger back, obviously, than Summers. Very physical, and uh, he, when he gets his pads down between the tackles there, he's hard to bring down. Sanders hasn't really thrown the ball much in this game with the wind conditions, but he comes out firing and threw it a off maybe the wrong shoulder of his intended receiver and that's Hightower incomplete. So the clock stops at 14.40. You can hear uh, Mickey Bell barking out some instructions to his defense, the head coach in his seventh season here at Glendale. He's telling those DB defenders to reroute those receivers. That's what's the problem in that play. Sanders in the pocket, hit as he tries to throw, and it comes loose, but fortunately for Scottsdale, one of those big offensive linemen was able to recover, and it looks like it was Kylie Ellis. And that was number 60, Chris Hill, the 6'6 defensive end that put great pressure on the quarterback that forced that fumble. He is a man among boys, I'm telling you. Uh, just showed up in August. Yeah. And July, uh, yeah. he has been a great find for the Gaucho football program. Well, and what he has done along with uh, the young man from Nigeria, eBay, is give this team depth up front. And that's certainly valuable in this conference. Third and 20, Sanders with the win behind him, throwing it into the back of the end zone incomplete. Jeff, it's going to be so hard to complete those deep balls, whether you're throwing with the wind or against the wind. It's just so hard to gauge it. When you throw those shorter and intermediate throws where you can put the zip on the ball, they'll have more success. But those deep ones like that, it's just, it's just really hard to gauge how much to put on them. So Matt Room back at the 50-yard line, line of scrimmage at the 35. Probably won't be a returnable punt. They're going to, now this one's going to go into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. And let's send it down to Mike Caratanuto. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jeff. You and Coach are talking a lot about, obviously, Glendale's defensive line. And I know, Coach, you mentioned it before the game, how Chris Hill didn't play any high school ball, and neither did Abay Kingsley. And they are just absolute menaces out there. Funny story about Chris Hill. Coach Bell, like you guys talked about, worked him out two days before camp and actually didn't walk him out. He just walked into his office, and Coach, you'll appreciate this. He told me when 6'5", about 330 or 275 walks into your office, you know they can play. So he told them to uh, pass a physical, and you see the menace that he's causing tonight for the Scottsdale offensive line. With all that valuable depth, here's a screen pass on first down and 10. Glendale is going to get a first down as a result. Roland Genesee getting the call that time, and that's good for 11 yards. 
Well, that's a package that Coach J.D. Sowers, the offensive coordinator for Glendale, has put in with both the, uh, the two the running tailbacks in the game off. at the same time. So they'll dive one of them up the middle, and the other one, in this case, Genesee runs a swing pass, and the quarterback has the option of whether to give the ball on the handoff or to swing it out to Genesee. Genesee's got nice hands and got a nice gain on that play. Out of a modified pistol, Jenkins gets the call. And he's down to the 32, picks up a couple of yards, but there's a penalty marker down on the play. I believe they're gonna get number 75, Preston Brooksby, the left tackle for the Gauchos on a hold. So that's gonna move them back 10 yards from the Holding spot. On the offense, number 52. Somewhere around the 20 yard, yard line, I would spot. imagine, uh, 21 yard line. My apologies to Mr. Brooksby. They didn't call his number. I didn't hear what number, but it wasn't 75. I, th I think maybe it was 52. Well, nonetheless, 13 and a half left to play here in the first half. Second quarter action, the Gauchos with a seven to nothing lead. Our season premiere of National Junior College Football on MCTV. We're not gonna get too much on this ground attack. Smothering defense up front, hard hitting defense. I'll tell you what, that Trey Campbell, he's not the biggest kid out there, 6'1", 187 pound defensive back, but he seems like he, he's always got a stick in there. Yeah, he's a playmaker, he's, got, he's one of those instinctive guys, he's always seemed to be around the football. Inside of 13 minutes left to play here in the first half. Galchos in the black, second and 19, we got whistles and a stoppage in play here. The officials will confer and see what this is all about. We were correcting the box on the field. Should be second down. You could, you could hear the microphone, the official's microphone. That wind is still maybe not quite as strong as it was when that storm first hit. The dust storm that we're still, still in. And now pressure on Kidd on second and 19 and he throws a, I guess what you would call a dying quail to the far side incomplete. And it's third and long for the Glendale offense with 12.38 left to go here in the second quarter. See now last week, Kidder completed that pass, running to his left, getting away from pressure, but throwing against this really vicious wind, just couldn't get enough on that ball to get to the receiver effectively. He was 17 of 23 last week against Mesa for 227 yards and three touchdowns and no picks. Screen pass to the far side, still creating, keeping those legs moving. He's got two to beat. He's gonna be wrapped up right around midfield. Well, a short yardage play by design. And then you get the yards after the catch. So valuable is this Terry Juneal for the Gauchos. He, he is the playmaker on the Glendale football team. That young man with ball in hand can do a lot of special things. And you're gonna see a few more of those types of plays to him tonight before this game is over, I'm sure. It was a 30 yard pass play, but he got maybe 27 after the catch. 12.26 on the clock. First down and 10 inside Scottsdale territory. Back to the ground. And Glendale goes back to Genesee. Genesee will pick up about four on the play, bringing up second down and six. Talking about this uh, Genesee, he's out of Tennessee, by, by the way. Genesee from Tennessee. <laughs> and this is that package I was talking about earlier, that the two tailbacks in the game at the same time. So one of them's probably gonna dive, the other one's probably gonna swing. There's the dive, and they handed it off to Genesee. It looked like Campbell may have I'm gotten in there. 14 again. Yeah, Campbell got in there, and that was not Genesee. That was number three, Jenkins, on the dive. Genesee was on the pitch path. Well, Glendale looks like they've donned new uniforms this year with the big GCC on the front. Well, I really like the white numbers. You can <laughs> see those a lot better. I know those red ones they had last year, or red outline, I can't remember as the outline, but uh, those are very difficult to see from up here. So now third down and five. 
11 minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. Kid back to pass, three-step drop, looks right, throws it over the middle. He's got a wide open receiver. Justin Corbett, their third receiver at a link away East Illinois. Touchdown, Glendale, 13 nothing. And you gotta give all the credit to the protection for the quarterback on that play. They brought six, no pressure whatsoever. They stoned them right at the line of scrimmage. Kid had all the time in the world to, to search the field, and Corbett was wide open down that left seam for the touchdown. Patrick Murray. And the kick is good. Let's send it downstairs. Glendale 14 to nothing. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, Coach, you're touching on it. I mean, Roland Genesee and Brandon Jennings talked about in pregame the double-headed monster, the two-headed dragon, I guess you could say here at Glendale. It's worked out well, but one thing talking to Coach Bell is excited about, outside, of course, his defense, which is his baby, but is the play of Jeff Kidd. He has gelled with these wide receivers, and last week against Mesa, you could just see the error getting set out of Mesa sales because of the balance of Glendale's offense. You see the dominant run, the dominant run, then all of a sudden the secondary starts to take a step up too quick, and what's the result? A touchdown. So, again, great by Glendale with this early 14-0 uh, lead. The thing I see Glendale doing this year that has really been effective for their offense is really the mix you were talking about, uh, Michael, and that, you know, having two great running backs that you can keep feeding the ball to to set up those play-action opportunities. And when you get these, these receivers are very disciplined for Glendale, which has not always been the case. But these guys run great discipline routes. They catch the ball when it's in their area, and they've been making big plays these first two and a half games. So Patrick Murray to kick things off. Davis and Hightower to receive. It's a short kick into a 20 mile per hour win. Fielded near the 17 by Davis. Races up across the 40, the 45, where he will be wrapped up. Special teams coverage by Matt Rodriguez, a freshman out of Centennial High School here in Arizona. That's a great job by the Scottsdale kickoff return team. They set that return up off, set it up very, very well, and Davis didn't mess around. Sometimes you get return men that kind of go sideways. He went north and south and did a great job making that return. 28-yard return. This is the fifth possession of the game for Michael Sanders, tall, right-handed throwing quarterback for Scottsdale. First down and 10 from their own 45. Back to pass, he looks left, he looks over the middle. He rifles one to the 43 where it's caught by his tight end, and that's gonna be 12 yards and a first down for the Gauchos and the big tight end, Tyere Blakes. Yeah, Blakes did a nice job finding the seam in that in the middle of that zone, showed his numbers to the quarterback, and Sanders put it on the line between the one and the one. So they'll mark the ball between the hash marks at the 43-yard line, first down and 10, 10.40 on the clock. Sanders looks left, looking with time. He fires complete. That ball was caught at the 37 by Hightower. He fights his way to first down yardage. Actually, he's going to be about a half a yard shy. And the Gauchos got some decent pressure that time, but a great job by Sanders staying in the pocket and drilling that ball in there in a very uh, narrow space. Second and about a half a yard. Scottsdale trying to get on the board for the first time here in the first half of this game. And they're coming off a big loss at nationally ranked Western last week. Wide open to the far side, the catch is made. Right around the, uh, looks like about the 17 yard line and it's caught by number 17, Quintez Thompson, his first catch of the evening. Well, that was a very poor job by the right corner in that play number 22 for the Gauchos, Jeremy Lagasca. He did not reroute that receiver in too deep coverage and that's why that receiver was wide open. Saquon Summers, he is the, uh, the lone setback, spread offense here for Scottsdale. Trying to get on the board for the first time. Sanders throwing wide open in the end zone. Touchdown Scottsdale, Michael Means Jr. But there is a penalty marker back behind the line of scrimmage with 9.49 left to go here in the first half. Now if that's roughing the passer, which I think it is, Scottsdale will be able to take that penalty either on the extra point or I think even on the kickoff. 
So we'll, we'll see what the call is. Well, a nice job by Sanders staying tough into the pocket and under some pressure. Roughing the passer on the defense, number 32. 15 yard penalty will be tacked onto the kickoff. Touchdown. Four plays, 55 yards, and now the extra point attempt. Matt room to hold for place kicker Noah Perales. Nine forty-nine left to go here in the first half. Extra point is good. Let's send it downstairs to Michael. Well, guys, this is exactly what Scott still did last week again against Western. Western, they got down a little bit, but again, my, uh, Michael Sanders just settled down and ran the offense and did exactly what Coach Ziegler wanted him to do there. That drive right there, Coach, it was quick, but the offensive line came together. And like I said, talking to Coach Ziegler earlier in the week, he said having Will Kreider came back. Uh, Kreitler come back was huge, but just getting everybody in position. Kreitler stayed at center, but they moved their offensive line around, and now their starting five have been probably, he said, not surprising in a bad way, but the most surprising. They've been solid, and they've had trouble with the defense so far, but that drive right there shows when Coach Ziegler keeps the tempo up, guys, that Scottsdale can punch the ball in the end zone just like they did last year. Well, Mike, Glendale has become a, a zone coverage team. And that drive, <laughs> Scottsdale started figuring out some ways to attack that two deep zone in particular that Glendale has been wanting to play much of this season. And uh, it'll be interesting to see the chess match as Coach Bell adjusts and does some different things with their defense. So Perales puts that one into the night air and out of the back of the end zone. So it'll be a touchback. Glendale will take over with a 14-7 lead with 9.49 left to go here in the first half and they'll take over at their own 25-yard line. That last drive, four plays, 55 yards, capped off by a 17-yard 17, 17 touchdown to the young man out of Cincinnati, Ohio. A lot of good people out of Cincinnati, Ohio area. That's what I've heard. One up here in the booth, I think, mm -hmm. or somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Close enough. This is a big series for Glendale's offense. See if they can get the momentum back in their favor. Well, Kidd returns, Jeff Kidd, and the pass was dropped. It was incomplete as they tried to hook up with uh, Evan Fouts. He may have heard some footsteps there. Ryan Henderson was. Yeah, Henderson was right there in the neighborhood, and I hadn't seen Fouts drop any passes last week. That's unusual. He's, he's got a very sure-handed receiver. Glendale got out to a 14 to nothing lead. Scottsdale scored on their last drive, what, five plays for 55 yards, four plays for 55 yards. Scottsdale coming in 0 and 1. And then, yeah, I would say almost, I mean, considering the fact is we got a penalty marker down, Scottsdale's in a position now, they got to win. Yeah, this early in the season for them to have a, a chance at the WSFL title and, and an opportunity to host Defense the Valley Sun Bowl. This is a Five big, big penalty. game. Remains second down. The other thing you got to consider is that with the new playoff format, there's only eight regular season games. Right. So you've, you, you've shortened the season by two games. So that really puts a value on each and every victory or loss. So second down and five. Looked like there might have been some movement. Here's a free play for Glendale off the hands of one player and into the hands of Trey Campbell, the interception. But hold the phone, there is a marker down, a penalty marker down near the 33-yard line back on the other side of the field. And that's got to have been a free play for Glendale. The, the Artichokes were in the neutral Offside. zone. Offside, defense number 52. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. And the Scottsdale player that was in the neutral zone, number 52, was yep. disciplining himself. Jalen Daly doing push-ups. I've never seen that, I don't think, in a football game. Well, it's a sign of good leadership. Nine and a half on the clock. Kid on the handoff. And it's Genesee again who came into today's game averaging nine yards a carry, played at uh, Division I, Tennessee Martin. leave the game for one play due to helmet. 
you know, these two big backs for Glendale, sometimes it doesn't look like they're getting a lot of yards, but they're both in the 225, 230 range, and they push that pile forward, and all of a sudden they got four yards when it looked like he was going to have two. They got Taylor wide to the far side. Cody Zimmerman is a slot receiver. He goes in motion. Genesee in the backfield, flanking Kidd, low snap, picked up by Kidd. He has to unload a dangerous pass, incomplete. That could have been six had Kalen Hightower reacted just a hair quicker. Yeah, he was right there. I, I was surprised that Kidd forced that ball, but he uh, he showed a little bit of uh, panic that time and with the uh, poor snap and picking it up and trying to get rid of the ball. Big play here for both teams. Third and six, field position game, obviously with the wind, although the wind is changing directions, it looks like. It looks like it's coming more out of the east right now. Kid works out a pistol, third down and six. Lofts a deep, a clean ball, and coming back for the ball is the receiver, and that's Rod Taylor, his second catch of the evening. And I'm telling you, Jeff, what a huge advantage to have a talented wide receiver like that. At six feet five, great body control. The young man's been here a couple of years now, and he has really matured into a great player. So Rod Taylor, six foot five, they come out to give it to Genesee. 44 yards on that pass play. And now Glendale looking at second and probably 10 here. Well, we, got a, we got a flag thrown by the head linesman down here at the bottom. Actually, that would Personal be the foul. Line. Face mask on the defense number 52. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, that was an untimely uh, penalty against the Scottsdale defense. Yeah, so. I, I sure didn't see that one. They, they had them stuffed in there and there was no need to, to grab a face mask, but sometimes it, in, that inadvertently is going to happen. Jeff Kidd, a quarterback, 6'4", 205 pounds, a native of Oregon. Went to Weber State last year. Here is the handoff in Genesee, who there was some contact initially, even though it was a broken tackle. Trying to get the number who hit him first. It looked like 31, Josh Kindred. And then eventually uh, taken care of by Dalvin Richardson. Uh, check that. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. That's uh, Brian Keyes, I think, eventually brought him down. And we had a late flag at the end of this play. Let's we'll see what the call is going to be. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 70 of the offense, 15-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, that's, that's a double whammy for Glendale because it's a dead ball penalty, so you lose the down, and you're also going to lose 15 yards. So a very undisciplined play by the Glendale offense at the end of that play. That was Pinnock who got in there first on that last play. I stand corrected. The penalty going against Marquez Tucker, who was on that Hamilton Huskies squad a year ago, who was on the state championship Huskies two years ago. And now it is second and goal from right around the 28-yard line. Kid out of shotgun. Has plenty of time. Now the pocket closes in on him. He's flushed out of the pocket. He will throw into the back of the end zone and it's picked off. It was intercepted in the corner of the end zone by DJ Olmstead. And so Scottsdale will take over with 8.07 left to play here in the second quarter. That was a great play by Olmstead. Kid under duress. Scrambling to his left, thought he should have probably run that ball, but he thought he had a receiver in the back of the end zone, and uh, Olmstead broke on the ball very, very well and high-pointed it to get that big interception for the Artichokes. So it is a touchback, and on the interception, the um, defensive team gets it at the 20, not the 25 like you would see on a kickoff. 8.07 left to go. MCTV's coverage of National Junior College football continues as Scottsdale looks to equalize, but they will probably be looking at a first and 15 after we get the initial call. Ball start on the offense, number 55. Five yard penalty, first down. First down, 
Well, if this was 2013, you'd expect a, about a five-play, 85-yard drive by the Artichoke offense. This is what, that's what they typically did throughout the season last year. So let's see what they can come up with on this drive. Second and 15, Summers is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Huge, huge defensive play turned in by Riley Brown, the freshman out of Colorado. And, and Shadow Williams was in on that play as well, number 56, who read that play from the linebacker position. We'll see if Glendale stays in zone coverage. They've been playing zone all night. Maybe Coach Bell's going to mix in a little man blitz every once in a while. Spread offense again for Scottsdale. They looking at a second and 15. Here's the pass. Oh, it was in and out of the hands. Incomplete of Ryan Wood, the cornerback at a Sunrise Mountain High School just up freeway 101 here. There is a flag down. Well, that was a really uh, well-executed defensive uh, fundamentals by Mr. Wood, other than catching the ball. He rerouted the receiver and got underneath him and really broke well on that ball. Yeah, you talk. After the play, oh, hold on. personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 56 of the offense. After the distance to the goal, third down. Will Kreitler, one of the leaders, is one of the senior leaders on that team be a sophomore at this level, but you've talked a couple of times here, Coach, about redirecting a receiver. What does that actually mean? Well, wide receivers want to get vertical. They want to get down the field as fast and as far as they can, and rerouting them keeps them from doing that and trying to keep their routes shorter than they want to run the routes. Sanders going for the home run ball deep and up the hands of Hightower. Incomplete, it was great coverage, Coach, by Streeter Turner, but that ball was right into the hands of Hightower. Yeah, that was a heck of a throw by Sanders. Put it right on the money, Hightower. It's hard catching the ball when it's that far, number one, but in this wind, it's really hard. And so, uh, unfortunately for Hightower, he was not able to bring that in. And it's interesting, they, they've told us the wind has actually now shifted. It was blowing, uh, it was, blowing directly behind Scottsdale. Now it is blowing towards the far side of the field. So you've got a crosswind to contend with now. As Scottsdale brings out Matt Room, punting out of his own end zone. Line of scrimmage, the nine yard line. This one is going to land inside the 50 and picked up near the 45 yard line. So that one will go for now roughly 46 yards. Sounds good to me. 7.15 on the <laughs> clock. It is still Gauchos of Glendale, 14. The Artichokes of Scottsdale, 7. You're watching MCTV Sports and our coverage of National Junior College Football alongside good friend Joe Kirsting, our entire crew, Mike Caratanudo on the field. I'm Jeff Lowry. And Jeff Ventner with the stats for us tonight, doing a great job. Kid works out a shotgun, and they'll run that little fly sweep to the near side, and it was Jagney who wrapped him up right at midfield after a gain of three. What a hustle play by Jagney. My goodness. He came from the far side of the field, chased down the receiver running the fly sweep, and Corbett. kept it to a three-yard gain. Corbett, who had scored earlier tonight, to extend the lead to 13 to nothing for Glendale. Picks up about three yards on that last play and it's second down and seven back inside Scottsdale territory. Zimmerman in motion. Kid looking that way, nope, he'll fire over the middle and enough for the first down, nine yards. That was Dante Edwards on that, on that reception. He did a nice job sitting himself down in the zone and Kidd hit him right on target and a nice first down completion for the Gauchos. So it's first and 10 from the 39 yard line. Glendale in the all black uniforms moving from right to left and leading 14 to seven as we approach the six minute mark here in quarter number two. Quick handoff, they'll run it over left tackle and Jenkins will get close to four yards on the play, bringing up second down and six. And that's a personnel group Glendale hasn't used much yet tonight. They put a true fullback in the game, Dickerson, number 35, and he was the lead blocker in that, got a nice block on the linebacker, and just an isolation play for uh, 
Jenkins to pick up five yards. Tackle made by Trey Campbell, his fifth of the night, 545 on the clock, a stoppage in play. The officials talking things over. We've been told that lightning is within the vicinity. The game is being postponed. Well, I think that says it all. So we are in the midst of a lightning delay. This one starts at the 8.01 mark here on this Saturday, September 6th. Gauchos lead 14 to seven, and we will be back momentarily on the NCTV Sports Network. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal, Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports, only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. <laughs> 